Our viewer has asked, if we all went vegan, wouldn't we still have greenhouse gases coming from cows and then would we just kill them? What a powerful and profound question that is. So let me expound on it. This is no small matter. We're all concerned about climate change and the impending catastrophe. Why? Because gases are building up in the atmosphere that are holding in the Earth's heat. Uh, and as a result, the polar ice caps are melting, droughts are happening, et cetera. And we're all focused on the, the transferring from coal-fired power plants and from uh, uh, internal combustion cars. Uh, let's get solar panels on everybody's house. Let's get uh, electric cars going. And those are all fine things. But when you look at the amount of greenhouse gases being, re being released every day, uh, that is not going to solve the problem. Why not? Because the three greenhouse gases are carbon dioxide from burning forests, basically, uh, methane gas, largely from animal agriculture, which we'll talk about in a minute, and nitrous oxide, which largely comes from, um, from again, animal agriculture. All the hundreds of millions of, of cows and pigs and chickens and ducks and goats in America and around the world are fed grains that have been raised with ammonia-based fertilizers for the nitrogen. And as you apply these fertilizers and they break apart, they release nitrous oxide into the air. So growing these ammonia-based uh, crops with uh, ammonia-based fertilizers is a major problem. The every, Constantly, if you look at a map from NASA about the fires that are burning right now, uh, around the world, you see these bands of fires uh, across Africa, uh, the northern part of the Sierra, of the, of the Sahara, uh, the lower part of the Sahara, North America, and the Amazon. The, the, we are burning forests. Why? Because we cut them down to make grazing land and crop land for beef uh, and uh, to grow either corn and soybeans to feed the animals or graze the, the beef cattle themselves. Uh, and in cutting down the forests and burning them, you not only release carbon dioxide, but those trees are gone. As trees grow, they take carbon dioxide out of the air and turn it into solid wood. They're the best carbon capture the device ever devised uh, by, and Mother Nature gave them to us. We've cut down half the trees on this planet. Uh, there were six trillion trees, now we're down to three trillion, largely to feed our voracious appetite for animal flesh. Well, we, and we, the forest wants to come back. You know, those trees you know, put out their seeds and new trees grow and the forest wants to replenish itself, but we keep cutting them down and burning them. That's what those fires are about. And it's to keep the forest from coming back and that keeps those trees from growing. We're really creating our own demise here. And finally, there's the animals themselves. On planet earth now, there are a billion cows. You know, I won't even get into the cows and pigs and chicken. There's a billion cows on planet Earth. Uh, and in America, there's a hundred million cows right now in the United States. They're all breathing out carbon dioxide and they're all belching out methane as they digest the grains we're being uh, feeding them. So for that reason, and methane is the most powerful heat trapping gas. It's 20 times more powerful than carbon dioxide molecules. So between cutting down the forests and burning them to keep them coming back and then feeding those grains to animals to belt out uh, methane, we're really uh, creating our own problem here. So this person is asking, uh, if we all went vegan, we still have greenhouse gases coming down? No, we wouldn't. Uh, we would stop breeding more of them. Would we kill them all? We, every year in this country, as I said, we've got 100 million cows. Uh, we kill 40 million cows every year. Over 100,000 a day uh, are, are, are slaughtered. Uh, if we paid all the farmers, stop making more cows. Yeah, the ones that are around here would still go through the through the slaughter industry, they would they would disappear. But but when people say, "Oh, we're going to be overrun with cows," no, stop making more of them. We won't be overrun by them. All right? That's all we need to do is spare them that uh, terrible fate here. So um, so no, uh, uh, we would not still have the greenhouse 
the gas problem. And at that point, we need so much less land to, to grow food that are fed directly for people. It takes two football fields of land and all the energy, the water, et cetera, to feed one person a meat-based diet, two football fields, uh, the, the grains to feed the animals. But those same two football fields could feed 16 human beings if you just grow corn and beans and fruits and vegetables and feed it to the humans directly. So if we all went vegan, we would need so much less land, a quarter of the land we're now using to create an animal-based diet, three quarters of the land could be let to come back in the forest and in the natural world. It would save the wild animals and it would save us. Those trees would grow and pull carbon dioxide out of the air and reverse uh, this whole catastrophe we're looking at. So um, we still have greenhouse gases, they would go be this much uh, compared to what we're now putting in. And, and the cows, um, the slaughter machine would, yes, uh, would reduce their numbers and then that would be the end of it. Uh, they're, they're being not attached. They're, we created these animals. In the fossil record, there is no fossilized dairy cows. We, we made them, we created that one from, from wild cattle that, uh, that we bred them up there. Don't mourn these animals. They're artifactual creatures that Homo sapiens made. So the, don't, don't mourn their loss. There might be a couple left in zoos, but uh, the, they should shut the zoos down too. Uh, but um, it's, it won't be a tragedy. It'll be a he healthier world by far. We'll all be healthier for that. I urge you get this wonderful thin little book called Food is Climate by Glenn Mercer. You can order it off Amazon. You download it onto your cell phone. It's 60 pages of that. You can read it in an evening and it, you will get... The, the scope of the picture here. And so, yes, uh, to come all the way around uh, at the beginning of this question, when I said we're focused on solar panels and shutting down coal-fired power plants, Glenn Mercer makes it evident, Dr. Oppenlander in his book, Comfortably Unaware, makes it clear. You can put solar panels on everybody's house. You can give everybody an electric car. If we continue to eat animal flesh and keep burning the forests, to, and using these ammonia fertilizers to produce that meat, doesn't matter how many electric cars you make, doesn't matter how many solar panels you put on, we're, we're not going to avert the catastrophe. Uh, adopting a plant-based diet is square one for saving ourselves. Uh, uh, and all homo sapiens around this world, it's what we need to do. And so everybody can do their part by making that evolution your own diet and then setting the example. Don't have to get pugilistic about it with your with your family there but you stop eating animals and if anyone asks you tell them because you care about the animals and the future and your own health and so uh, so yes going vegan uh, fear it not you know it's our salvation and and i really hope uh, uh humanity wakes up to the fact we are plant eating hominids by anatomy by nature and uh, we should uh be true to a, the truth of who we are. And if we do that, uh, everything will get better from there. The earth will heal and so will we. Absolutely. Those are very, very wise words. And I think that that is a common um, uh, misconception that, well, if we don't eat the cows, then we're just going to be overrun with cows, but we are creating those cows. So uh, you, you explained that great. So thank you so much, Dr. Clapper. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time. Right. Don't eat the homies. Don't eat the homies. Hi, everyone. Dr. Michael Clapper here announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Annie Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.